Hey folks, welcome to Fireflies Follies. I hope that you enjoy the video today, and if you do, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and stick around for a while. So today I've got a couple things going on. I've been peeling apples this morning. This peeler is amazing. Let me just tell you, this peeler is amazing. If you don't have one and you do a lot of apples, it is a lifesaver. So I've been peeling and slicing apples all morning to get some stuff ready, and I wanted to, while my apples are sitting and marinating in a bit, um, I'm going to make some scrap apple jelly, and I wanted to show you how that works. So while I've been peeling, I've been putting my cores and my peels in a saucepan, or in a stock pot. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water in and I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to let this simmer for a while. And basically what I'm doing is I'm making apple juice <clears throat> by extracting all of the flavor from the cores and peels and some pectin. And what I'll do is I will ultimately strain this through a jelly bag and I will make scrap apple jelly. That's what my granny always called it. It's apple jelly that's made from the juice from simmering apples. So I wanted to show you kind of how I got started. Let me put this in the sink. So I have just peeled and cored a peck of apples. I'm going to be making some apple pie filling and a couple of other things with the apples. So, But I wanted to show you how I get started on this. Let me get this last one done here. And when you use one of the, the apple cores like that, the apple doesn't always get straight. So you just have to go in and check for your core. And any of those pieces that I cut out that are still some core left in there, they go into my scrap pan. So all that I'm going to do is I'm going to put probably, I got a lot more than I was expecting. So I am probably going to start it with about four cups of water in it, about a quart of water. And I may add some to it later, but for now, I'm going to get it started with a quart of water. Okay, so what I have is all of the peels and cores from my apples. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put about a quart or so of water in. I'm not going to add any flavoring, no sugar, no anything of that nature. And we are just going to make apple juice from these peels and cores. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to a simmer and I'm going to let this simmer on my stove for the next three hours or so. And I'll check it about every hour. I'll check it. I'll kind of mash them down, stir them around a little bit and add a little more water if I want. Ultimately, I would like to get two quarts of juice out of this. Now, juice being the water that has the flavor from the peels and the cores extracted in addition to the little bit of apple juice that you're going to get. So I'm going to get this going and I will bring you back in a little bit and we'll see where we're at. Okay, so I'm just stopping by about every 15-20 minutes and this is nice and hot. It's a low, low simmer. I don't want it to boil. I just want it to simmer and I just stop by every 10 or 15 minutes and, and kind of stir it around a little bit make sure that everything is as under the liquid as I can and I just put the lid back on it and walk away and I'm gonna have this going for about three hours or so so I will check back in with you in a bit all right y'all the apple peels and apple cores have simmered for oh geez almost four hours. I got busy with some other stuff. I turned them all the way down to they were just barely on and walked away because I got busy with a couple of other things. But So this is what we ended up with. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. So this is what we ended up with. All those peels and cores cooked down in that water and we are left with juice. So, all right, so what I have here is just a small colander that fits in my pitcher in the top of my pitcher and then I have some unbleached muslin and this is the same thing that I make my jelly bags out of but I have my jelly bags in use at the moment so I'm just gonna set it up to drip and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this over and I'm gonna let it drip for the next couple of hours just to make sure that we get all of the liquid out and then I'll give it a bit of a press just to make sure that all the liquid is out and because I've run out of time for today 
I got distracted with a bunch of other things. I am going to let this cool until almost bedtime. And then when it's pretty close to bedtime, I will transfer it into a couple of quart jars and stick it in the fridge. And then tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to make scrap apple jelly. So I'm just going to keep transferring and letting it drip. And as it drops down a little bit, I'll put some more in. I got about half of it in that time. So I'm going to keep doing that and then I will be back. So all of my jelly bags and stands are full. They're in use. Today has been a let's get food done day. And this needs to drain, drip, for a couple of hours. So I am going to adjust it where it needs to be, tie it to my kitchen cabinet door so that it is just ever so slightly elevated. Make sure that's in the center. And we are going to let this drain for a couple of hours. So you don't necessarily need a jelly bag in a jelly bag stand. You can always use some butcher's twine and hover it above. So I'm going to let this drain for a couple of hours and I will be back. Okay, so now that we have made our scrap apple juice, let's turn it into scrap apple jelly. Now, I use Pomona's pectin. Pomona's does not require sugar in order to set up. It's not a low sugar gel, it is a no sugar gel. You can use sugar in it if you like, but you don't have to use sugar. You have to have something to disperse the pectin. I use erythritol and I mix my pe pectin in the erythritol. If you're going to use honey or no sugar, then you would want to put the pectin into your liquid um, honey or liquid stevia, whatever it is that you're using, or if none at all, then in water and put it in your blender in order to disperse it without it making little clumps. So when you buy Pomona's, if you buy it in the box or I buy mine in bulk, you get this separate little packet of calcium. Now this calcium, you mix it in water, and you just mix it in a jar, shake it every once in a while. When you're done making jelly, you just put this in your fridge and it keeps forever. I made this jar last year at the end of season and it is where it has worked fine all season this season. So let me show you how this works. Get some stuff out of the way so we have room to work. So I'm going to take my stock pot and my apple juice. And we strain this through muslin twice to make sure that we had the pulp out. So we'll put that in there. Now to this, I will leave the full recipe in the description below. I'm doing this for the amount that I have. 
So to this, I'm going to add lemon juice. I'm going to add the calcium water. Grab my spoon. And because I've put it out in this bowl, I'm just going to give it a quick stir to make sure that it's all mixed in. And I'm going to add my apple pie spice. Easy enough. Now I'm going to bring this up to a boil. And while this is coming up to a boil, I'm going to combine my pectin with my sugar. Give this a good stir here. All right, we'll let that come up to a boil. So all I'm going to do is take my pectin and pour it into my sweetener. And again, I'm using erythritol. You can use sugar. You can use none at all. It's entirely up to you with this pectin, which is great. And I'm just going to mix this together until it is thoroughly combined because this disperses the pectin into our syrup that we have going on, or juice that we have going on. All right, that seems pretty well mixed together, so I'm going to put that to the side. Now, we're water bath canning. There's not quite enough in there. So I've got my lids sitting back here in hot water, ready to go. Not boiling, just really hot water to keep them, to get them warmed up. I've got my pectin and sugar ready. I've got my jars in a hot canner. I brought them up to a boil, sanitized them. I let them boil for 10 minutes and then I shut them off. So they're just sitting here in a nice hot canner. So we're going to bring this up to a boil and then I will be back with you. All right, there we go. We're bubbling away. So you have to stir quickly because Pomona's activates with the calcium. You want to work it in very quickly before I put it in. Where's my timer? timer is set for one minute. So I'm going to stir this in, bring it back up to a boil, and I'm going to boil it for one full minute and then I'm going to shut it off. And again, you want to stir briskly as you're putting this in because it does start to gel immediately. Y'all, can I tell you, this smells amazing. And it's already thickened up to the point of being a thick syrup. So as it boils, it will continue to thicken. While that's coming up to a boil, I'm going to start grabbing jars. It has started to boil, so I've set my timer for one minute. I'm going to stand here and stir it. Because one, I don't want it to stick on the bottom, and two, I don't want it to boil over. And either of those things can happen quickly. All right, time to jar it up. We're 
we're going to about a half inch head space. I make a sticky mess all the time. I'm known for it. So to keep from spreading it, I'll wipe up some of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some plain white vinegar and some pieces of paper towel and I'm going to clean the rims of my jars. It doesn't matter how neat and clean you are, how precise you are with your filling of jars, you still need to do this. And there's a, there's, this serves two purposes. When I'm getting my jars ready, I check the rims for any nicks or bumps or cracks or anything that might interfere with the seal. This cleans anything that you have dripped up on the edge and you can fill that rim again to double check to make sure there's nothing there that will interfere with your seal. That one has a sticky, sticky spot right there. One more. All right, so lids. We're going to put the rings on fingertip tight. And y'all be careful, these jars are hot. Hot, hot. All right. And just fingertip tight, you don't want to wrench them down. I'm going to get these in the canner. I'm going to bring it back up to a full rolling boil. When it's up to a full boil, I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. And when that 15 minutes is up, I'm going to turn the heat off and let them sit for five minutes to cool. I'll, put, I'll move the lid off about like that to let them cool and then I'll take them out. And when it's time to take them out, I will bring you back. All right, so I brought the canner up to a full rolling boil. I processed for 15 minutes. I shut the heat off and I set the, the lid off to the side just a bit. It's been about five or six minutes, so let's see what we ended up with. Oh, and it's sealing right away. That's a beautiful sound. seal. And my itty bitty one for myself. Y'all, this is just absolutely beautiful. I don't think the camera is going to do it anything close to justice, but I will try. It is just gorgeous. It is a beautiful, beautiful dark amber. So this one hasn't sealed yet, 
this one is about to. What I'm going to do, that one just sealed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave them alone. I'm actually, I put them on a pan because I'm going to move them to my dining room table. And I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to let them cool down, seal, do their thing. Tomorrow, in about 24 hours, tomorrow I'll come back. I'll take the rings off and check the seals. I'll give the jars a good wash. I'll label them, put them in my pantry. They're good for a couple of years, two or three, maybe longer. I check my seals on a regular basis. And actually, a couple of these are gifts that I'm giving that I made for someone. So they'll get a pretty label put on them before I send them out. I really hope that you enjoyed the video today, and if you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out a lot. Hopefully you'll leave a comment that gets me noticed a little bit by YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. If you hit the notification bell, they'll let you know when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a great day.